Well hello Internet and welcome to my new tutorial on how to make Android apps. I'm going to specifically be using Android Studio but if you use Eclipse feel free to use it. I'll make sure that everything still makes sense. If you don't know how to install Android Studio I have a link in the description underneath the video. I also have another link under there for Android beginners if at any point in time any of this confuses you. And I have a lot to do so let's get into it. Alright, so here is Android Studio starting up, and there it is. So the very first thing we're going to do is just go into New Project, and I'll explain every single thing here. First, you're going to type in your application name. I'm just going to call this Hello Again, and of course I have all the code also in the description under the video. And this is very simple, it's just going to be your application name. Then down here you're going to see Module Name. Just leave that set for App, and basically a module is just going to contain everything you need for your application to be able to run. Then you're going to have Package Name, and you're going to have to type in something unique here. I have New Think Tank, type in something else. And the whole purpose of the package name is to make sure that everything you do is unique. This is the location for all of your files which we set up previously in the tutorial on how to install all this stuff. Right here we're just going to leave the minimum at this point in time set for 8 and this is just the minimum version of Android on a device that's going to be able to run your application and we're going to set our maximum at 19. Now there's going to be a new version of Android coming out very soon don't worry I'll automatically switch but you normally don't have to worry about it because Android doesn't change that dramatically from version to version and most of the time they're backwards compatible changes so not a big deal. Down here you'll see language level. This is something you don't really need to worry about, but if you want to know what it is, basically in Java 6 the override annotation no longer applies to interface methods, so this turns that capability back on. Like I said, if that's confusing, don't worry about it. You don't need to know any more than that. Then we come down to theme. Now basically styles or themes are going to specify the look of your app. Android's going to provide a whole bunch of pre-made themes for you to be able to use, and but right here well, I basically just have a couple. So I'm just going to keep this very, very simple and just just have hollow light and dark action bar. Now I don't want to click on this because I don't really feel like uploading a icon but if I did want to upload an icon inside of this wizard I would put a check there. If you want Android Studio to automatically create an activity for you you're gonna put a check mark there. If you want to actually define what is called an Android library you'd put a check right here and basically what that is an Android library is it's going to contain source code and other random resources that you'll be able to share with other Android projects. We're not going to do that now. And you have support mode and you can see right here we could have a grid layout automatically set up for us. We could set up fragments, navigation drawer, or action bar just by clicking inside of here but we're going to pass on that as well. So let's come down here and let's click on next. Whenever we click on next we're going to have a whole bunch of different types of activities that we can have set up by Android Studio. I'm going to stick with blank activity but by the end of this tutorial I'm going to take you through every single one of those. Come down here again and click on next. And then basically everything you really kind of need to worry about is right here. Now we're going to have a main activity which is going to be your Java class file which is going to be all the code behind your application. And then we're going to have an XML file called activity main which is going to basically allow you to design your layout for your application. But don't worry about it if you're not an XML guru you don't need to be. And that is it. I'm just going to leave all those at default and click on finish and it's going to go and start building that for me. While we're waiting for that I'm going to take you through the folder structure of a Android Studio project. Alright so here we are. Basically the idea folder is just going to contain project specific data that is stored here by Android Studio. Don't worry about it. You don't need to know anything else about it at this point in time. Then we're going to have the app folder which is basically your project module. This is your application. And then you're going to have a Gradle file. I went over Gradle a little bit in my Android tutorial on how to install Android Studio. But basically it is going to contain all the Gradle specific build files. We'll get more into that later. Let's dive into the app folder however and whenever we jump into the app folder we're going to have the build folder which is going to contain all your compiled classes auto generated files and other resources you're also going to have a libs folder which is going to contain all the libraries you import in your project and if any of this is confusing don't worry about it I'm going to cover it over and over and over again you're going to get it and then we'll dive into our source folder which is going to have the main application code now inside the source folder there's a couple folders we're going to focus in on here first I'm going to focus on main inside of main you're going to have a package name which is going to make your application unique 
and then you're going to have main activity.java, which is going to be all the code for your application. Also in the source folder and in the main folder, you're going to have a resources folder. And let's go through the specific resources. First, you're going to have a whole bunch of drawable folders, and they're basically just going to contain images that are going to be stored at different resolutions so your app looks nice on every screen that it opens on. Then you're going to have your layout folder, which is you're basically going to define the layout of your application in XML, like I said before, and it's going to be stored there, and later on you are also going to be storing many other different layouts for your application as they get more complicated. Then inside of your menu folder, you're going to have a file called main.xml where you're going to be able to define what is in the menu for your application. You're going to have values down here, which is going to store standards for your application like text, colors, dimension, styles, and a whole bunch of other different things. And then finally, you're going to have an Android manifest, which is basically going to provide information about your application so that the Android device is going to be able to run it. All right, so that's all we need to do right now. Let's jump over. Our project should be ready to go. All right, so we got our tip of the day. Let's close that. And the first file, well, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump up here and enlarge the text. There you can see all the text is real big now. So let's go move some stuff around here. Basically, you're gonna have your application be built right here. You can see right now it is just a simple hello world. This is a text view. We're gonna be talking about those later on. Let's just shrink this down. And here's all the folders that I was talking about before, see? There's idea, there's app, there's build, there's all the different folders. And you can see right there, there's a whole bunch of drawable folders, okay? We'll get into it, don't worry about it. So it's gonna take a little bit of time. All right, so like I said, whenever you first open this up, activity main is going to be showing on your screen and you're gonna see relative layout. You may ask yourself, what is relative layout? Well, I'm gonna quickly explain all the different layouts available. Okay, so you basically have linear layouts and they can either be vertical or horizontal. And if these are all the components that you wanna move on the screen, basically they're just gonna stack them vertically. That's all that's to it. Then you're going to have horizontal linear layouts and they're basically going to stack them horizontally as long as they fit. So this one fits there, this one fits there, this is not going to fit over here in this little box so it puts it down here and so forth and so on. Then you're going to have relative layouts. They are going to lay out all of your different components relative to all the other components. So if I want to put this guy in here and I want it to match the parent, the parent is actually going to be the relative layout. All right, so that's the parent. If I want to match the parent and the parent is full screen, it's basically going to fit inside of that area. Then if I want to put this guy in here, I'm going to say I want it to be below one, which is going to be this guy. So it is below one and to the left of three. This is three, that is three. Then I'm gonna say when I put this component in here, I want it to be below one, it is, and I want it to be the right of two, which it is. So that's how that fits. And then finally for the last one, I'm gonna say I want it to be below three. You don't have to say below two and three, just below three works. And then I want it to align to the right of the parent, which is the relative layout, and that's where it is, to the right. And then finally, we have grid layouts. They're basically going to line up everything like a spreadsheet in a table format. Very simple, you're gonna have different sizes and you're gonna be able to fit your components in in a really neat way. So that's all you need to know about relative layouts or layouts in general, so let's go back to the code. Okay, so here we are, and you can see right here, match parent. We're going to match the parent, which is the screen here, our activity, and we're also gonna match the parent for the height. That's what that is. We're gonna put in some padding, and I'm gonna get into what's going on here with the dimension stuff. Basically, we're gonna have a dimensions folder that's gonna contain all that information. Here, I'll show it to you. All right, so let's just jump over here and values, and there's the dimensions folder. Let's open it up, and there you can see. You may be asking yourself, why is it done this way? Well, basically, Android is big on keeping everything in its place. So if we want to keep all of our dimensions for every single thing and reuse them in a consistent manner, it kind of makes sense to be able to define them in a central location and then give them a specific name. Then we can just use that name over and over and over again. And if we want to change across our entire app, this from 16 to 15, we just do that and every single place is changed. So that's the dimensions folder. You're also gonna have a strings folder down here. Open that up. You're going to define your text inside of your strings folder. And what's awesome about that is we're going to be actually be able to have multiple different strings folders for different languages. So if somebody is French or speaks another language, it's automatically going to translate, which is very cool. And again, everything is in a central location, so it's very easy to make changes. So for example, if we wanted to come in here and change this from hello world to hello again, we can just type in hello again, and it's gonna change. Of course, save it, but that's all we need to do. Then we can jump over into activity main, and as you saw right there, it opened up when I was in activity main, but it didn't when I was there. I get that question all the time. You just have to click on activity main to get your little phone to show up. And you can see right here, it says hello again now. 
hello again right there in the text view. So that was rather simple. I'm going to get into context later on because they're a little bit complicated and I don't want to mess things up. And I go into text view. If I wanted to create a brand new guy here, I'm basically just going to have string. This is a reference to the string.xml folder and then hello world specifically. And if we go in here, you can see hello world and it says hello again, but it doesn't really matter. So that's how we're going to be able to use different types of text and translate and do all kinds of other cool things. Very nice. While we are here, let's also go into the Android manifest since we're jumping around a whole bunch. And here is the Android manifest file. Now this is just basic XML saying what this is encoded in. This right here is what we call a namespace, which is just going to make sure that everything used in Android is unique. There is your package, which is also there, so everything is unique. Allow backup here, we have that marked as true. And basically what this is going to do is if your application needs to be reloaded, if you have this set to true, it's going to automatically update all the information that was in the application prior to that. Drawable, this is a reference to your icon. And then this is a reference to the style folder, which is going to contain your theme. Come down inside of here again. See right here, activity, name this guy right here. Basically what we're saying here is this is the activity to launch when the application starts. This is basically just the name for your application as you can see right there. There's main activity. Come down here inside of intent filter. Basically an intent is nowhere near as complicated as some people make it. An intent is just a request for an action to be taken. That's it. It's just saying I have the intention to do something and that is it. And then under here what we're going to do is we're going to define what action we want to take. The type of actions that an intent could say it would like to take is to do something like start an activity which is what we're doing right here. Or to start a service like downloading data. Or to deliver a broadcast broadcast, which is basically a message to other apps. We'll get more into those later. But the intent filter specifically here is going to specify the type of intents an app can respond to and receive. By putting action main here, we are saying that the main activity class is the one that needs to execute when the app starts. And then by putting category launcher here, we're saying that it, this application, should appear in the launcher as the top level application. So that is Android Manifest. We can close that. Don't need to do anything else with it. And let's jump over into mainactivity.java. And I'll go through what's going on here. Whenever your application starts, the very first thing that's going to happen is this method right here called onCreate is going to be launched. A bundle is used to pass information between activities. We'll get more into that later. Set content view is going to set the file activity main as the user interface that we're going to be using. And let's jump over there right now and start playing around with that. So we're in activity main again. Now let's say we want the text to be bigger so we can actually see it here on our screen. To change the text size, I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna type in text size. You can see there it is right there, just hit enter. And then inside of this, I'm gonna put 40DP. Now you're probably very well informed that the abbreviation PX stands for pixels. Well, DP stands for density independent pixels. And basically that just means that images or text or whatever are going to scale based on screen density. And the vast majority of the time you're going to use DP. However, in the situation in which you're using fonts, you're going to use SP, which is very similar to DP and is known as scale independent pixels, if you'd like to know. But basically use SP with fonts and use DP for every single thing else. Now let's say we'd also like our text to be centered inside of the application. I'm just going to type out layout. And normally it's very easy to see here, but because it is so big, because I enlarged the font, it's a little bit harder to see. So I'm going to have to type in center. And I can see right there, horizontal is right there. I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm just going to put in true which I'm just going to type out. And that's just going to center the text like you can see right there it did. Now let's say I wanted to add a button. Well, I could go and type out button and do all those different things. I could also come down here into the design section and click on this. And then come over here to the button and just grab it and drag it. And everything's going to be relative. You can sort of see that happening there right now. I'm just going to drop it right there. And then if I jump back into text and click on this, you're going to see my button and everything has been created for me right there. Now I could leave this text right here set as as new button but we all know that's not good and it's actually telling me it's not a good idea so what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna copy this and jump over into strings.xml right like this and I'll just go and paste it in there like that and I'm just gonna go string name and I'm gonna type in button one text and then I'll get new button right here and paste it right there 
I can copy this, jump back over into activity main.xml, and now I'm going to be able to go in here and just put in an ampersand, string, forward slash, and button text, and now it's happy with me. Now the ID part right here, you might be wondering why that looks all funky. By having this ID inside of here, it's going to allow us to interact with the buttons and the text views over inside of our code. This part right here basically means that we are going to be adding another ID, and there is a master file called r.java, which is automatically generated. This is saying to add the button right here to the r.java file. Don't worry about that, and never go in and start playing around with the r.java file. It causes all kinds of problems. Let's say I want to give this a more descriptive name. No problem. There you go, first button. And you can also see right here that it's centered horizontally. And it says right here, because this is a relative layout, that we want it to be below the text view. And that's basically all we're going to have to do with our activity right now. Let's jump over into this guy and let's say something like you clicked and save that. Jump back over into activity main and you're going to see that it changed to you clicked. You can maybe see that. I'll enlarge it. See, you clicked. Okay, let's put that back again. And now let's jump over into mainactivity.java and start writing the code so that whenever you click on that button, it's going to interact with the text view. You can see up here all the different files that we are going to be importing. Now, like I said before, the main activity is going to be the main class for your application. The bundle passes data back and forth between different applications, but we only have one or different activities. Set content view says use activity main.xml as your layout. And if I want to get a hold of our text view, I'm first off going to have to mark it final in this situation because I want to use it in an inner class. And I'm just going to type in text view and I'll call it first text view. Then what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to cast it into a text view because what is passed back is a basic component called a view. So I have to say, hey, this is a text view. And to actually get it, I say find view by ID. And then specifically inside of there, I'm going to put R dot id dot and then i call it a text view and you can see it right there and there we go and don't forget to put semicolon at the end and you can also see up here that it automatically imported my text view libraries that i was going to use which is very convenient and basically i'm going to do exactly the same thing with the button except in this situation i am going to not have to mark it final because i'm not using it inside of the inner class let's call this first button I'm going to have to cast it to a button again, find view by ID, and the ID for this is r.id.first button. And these, of course, are just the IDs that I gave them whenever I created them. Activity main, and you can see this is called first button, and the other one right here is called text view. So there it is. That's where that's coming from. Jump back over in activity main. Now, if I want to tell the button to listen for a click and then do certain things, I just go first button dot set on click listener pops up and then inside of this guy i'm going to go new and this is going to create a inner class view dot on click listener there we go and it automatically went and created all that stuff for me which is awesome and then whenever this is clicked i want to set the text view text to different text and to do that i just go first text view set text there we go and then i'm just going to say you click and there it is. And that is how simple it is to have different components interact with each other. I mean, I barely even had to type anything. This guy down here is going to add different items to our action bar, but I'm not using that right now. And then this one down here is going to allow you to define what happens when different action bar items are clicked on. So that's everything. So let's run it. Basically, just going to come up here, click on Run App. And if things aren't going well, you're going to be able to come down here and look at all the different error messages. I went more into that in the previous tutorial on how to install Android Studio. And this is going to pop up. I can either choose a device that I've connected to my computer, or I'm going to come down here and just click on Nexus 7, which I set up previously. I can say use same device for future launches and click on OK. Now, the first time you build this, it's going to take forever to run. And that's just Gradle doing what Gradle does. But then after, as you run it more and more, it's going to get much quicker. If you can get a hold of an Android device, I would get a hold of one because it's going to save you an insane amount of time and they're not really that expensive. And here is the application opening up. And like I said, this can take a considerable amount of time whenever you first start using it. So bear with it. You have to wait for it to work. And then you just turn your switch. And here is your application all set up. It says hello again. And you click shows up. So there you go. Pretty simple application, but covers a lot. Of course, I'm going to be covering a lot more information. I'm going to be more than happy to take your advice. So please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.